Hey guys, we're going to doodle a fun spider web with autumn colors. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with an autumn doodle. I am really excited to share this. I shared it on my Instagram and on Facebook and people really seem to like having an opportunity to play with these pretty fall colors and putting them into a pattern that is recognizable but not hard. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun doing this. I am going to be using just some basic tools. You don't need a lot of tools to do this. I have a pen. This is an eco pen. It is by eco pen. <laughs> I got it on Amazon and it is waterproof. It doesn't react with alcohol markers and it doesn't react with watercolor markers because today we're using some watercolor markers. I did get these for free from Arteza. These are the new Arteza Twee markers, TWI markers. They have a fine tip that is 0.4 millimeters and a small brush tip. Works really nice. And they have, this set has a hundred colors. I've had a lot of people asking me if I would please doodle using colored markers because they already have some. And I had some people here that were asking if I had ever tried these markers. And I said, no. And they said, would you? And I said, I'll ask. <laughs> so Arteza sent me the markers for free. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming in. And for all of you who are struggling with a few things going on in your lives, I know I've been struggling with some stuff and uh, just finding a place to be calm and just doodle really seems to help me. Some people say it helps them too. All right. So I have pulled out some of the pens. They all come in these little trays and I find these trays to be very annoying, but they do keep the pens in order. So, you know, it's one of those things. This has you know, if you want to use all the pens, you've got five trays. <laughs> Look at that. That's all the pens that came in this set. Aren't they pretty colors? Yeah, there's a lot of really pretty colors, and I am looking forward to doing some mandala type doodling with all of these colors. I've seen some doodles, some drawings on Pinterest that were like, oh, I've got to try that. So sorry about all that rattly plastic. That's part of what annoys me with these, that they're, it's crunchy plastic sound. All right, we're just going to get right into this. I am also going to be using the Arteza Expert 100 pound watercolor cards. I don't have this listed yet in my uh, listing down below, but I do have the Twee markers listed. And once you get to Arteza, just do a search for the 100% cotton uh, watercolor cards. And I will get the link in there. I did use those pens on these leaves also. So let me know if you want a little class on how I did those leaves because, you know, they're fun. And I use them to do the leaves in the background of these birch trees. Do you want the birch trees? Let me know. Set these over out of the way. And pick up my pen that I just dropped. All right. So yeah, guys, take care. And if you are, you know, not really interested in drawing the spider, don't put the spider in the middle. Just fill it with more patterns. I did take, I'm going to zoom in now. Let's go a little closer up here. I did take one of those cards and tape it down onto a piece of that plastic board 
and I used a little bit of watercolor from this little fan palette just to put a little color in the background so it's not quite as yes do the leaves and birch trees excellent should we do that on Thursday I'm up for it <laughs> so I did just put a little bit of color on the background of the paper just so that we have just a little bit just a little bit now I am going to go and do this with a pen a pencil I'm sorry to just to give myself a little bit of um, oh let's see here I have a I have an idea but I didn't get the get the picture oh you love the little bear you know just doodling is so much fun I was looking at somebody else's piece of artwork when I doodled that but mine looks totally different than theirs so I'm just going to put a real light pencil line in here of kind of a branch just to give me a place for that spider web to be living so and it also gives us just a little bit more places to doodle you know I'm okay so just I just put a little branch for a plant I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my pen has started let's see here yep sometimes these pens now I love these pens totally totally love these eco pens but sometimes the tip will dry a little bit and all you have to do is run it off on another piece of paper just tap 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 um, you know, like just let me give you a close up on that. that's kind of important so there is what that branch looks like I think maybe I'm gonna split that little bit right there because it got a little thick you know if it if it gets too thick just split it and now I am going to put I'm gonna put just a circle here in the center let's zoom in on that That's where my little spider is going to be. So I'm going to put him in or her in. Just put a little, basically a ball with another little ball. That's the body and the, the thorax, but I'm going to say it's the body and the head. <laughs> so now I know where the center of my spider web is. It's right in the middle of this little girl. I'm going to go ahead and draw some lines out just straight from her and have them stopping on that branch. Look at that.
okay? That gives us our general framework. I'm still showing that I'm, I'm playing sound. Let's see if we're not getting any sound. Okay, sound is back. Interesting, I don't know where the sound went. Maybe I just started talking really soft. <laughs> that can happen, that can happen. So there's, our spider is in the center and our little spider web. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my black pen and start putting in my lines. I don't care if they are going over onto the little branch. See, we're just getting these lovely droopy lines. We're building a framework to do our doodling in. There we go. Well, I'm so glad the sound came back. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and you've got your main lines going there. I can go ahead and just put my lines in the middle here. Look at that. We're just giving ourselves places to doodle. And I think I'm going to bring it right up to her. Let your, let your little swoops move around a bit on the web here. I'm not going to put the lines in the very, very center to start off with. I want to draw my little spider in. And like I said, if you don't want to put the spider in, don't put the spider in. I know some people, they love spider webs, but they're a little freaked out by actual spiders. Nice thing about it, you can make this as cute or silly as you want. And I'm actually gonna make her smaller. And just coloring in her body. I am gonna put the legs on. And I'm not making this too, too realistic. I mean, this is a doodle spider. There we go. Now I can go ahead and now I know where those lines are going towards the center of the body. There we go. I can take those pencil lines off now. Oh, when I change camera angles, the sound disappears. Got it. I must not have, I must not have uh, set up the sound properly on that other one. I won't change angles. Thank you for telling me when it happened. All right. So now I've got my pencil lines off of there, out of the way. I just used a kneaded eraser and because I put the pencil on top of the watercolor, we didn't end up with it getting trapped under the watercolor. So super easy doodling. We're just going to zoom in more after I shift over. So super, super easy doodling for beginners. Basic patterns. One of the most basic patterns, and I'm going to grab those twee markers, and I'm doing this in the kind of the autumn, fall type colors. So I am just going to start out here. I'm going to make a lot of noise for a second, guys. Sorry. <laughs> like I said, that's what annoys me with these. 
I'm just going to get them all out. Now, these pens, like I said before, they've got a, let's see, I don't think I want a super black pen in here. I want one of the grays. They do have gray pens in here, so on my black areas, I will shadow with a gray pen. They do have uh, clear bodies. I mean, look at that. It's clear. The reference marking for the color is the barrel. And not too close, are they? But plastics, the polymers they use in plastics to make these colors. The, the pens are water-based. And I have not tried blending with them. So let's just... Let's grab a couple couple colors. I have tried blending just marker on top of marker. Good morning, George. Glad to see you. And yeah, the color, I mean, they're just dye markers. They're just water-based dye. So it's not like, it's not like they're watercolor markers. These don't bleed out as much they bleed, but they don't bleed out as much. So I wouldn't be doing this with uh, coloring my lines and then trying to bleed them out with a water or brush or anything. So I'm glad that I decided to do this as a, just a doodle. Now I'm using the autumn type colors. And so I've got sienna brown and biscotti brown. I'll, I'll name the colors as I pick them up. I think we're going to start off though with a uh, kind of a brownish tone. Let's go with hazelnut brown. And I am going to do the doodling with the fine tip. Look how fine that is. And we're going to go in and just start putting, I'm just putting little bumps, scallops, So this is where the super easy patterning comes in. Just doing scallops. Okay. And then on each of the insides of each scallop, I'm going to put more little arches. As many as you want. And you don't have to do the same number on each one. We will take the brush tip and do some shadowing. And I will do the shadowing with the same color, which is kind of fun. And it's interesting to see how, when you're doing it with the brush tip, how the color is not as uh, strong. Ah, uh, yeah, there, uh, EU shopping for the materials, there's, Arteza, if you click down below on any of my links that say uh, Europe, that's the EU, and that will take you to their Europe store where you can do shopping. Now, they do have, you know, many countries that they send to. I don't, I don't have that list in front of me on all the countries they send to in Europe. So please you know, check that store out. If it says USA, then it's, or US, it's the US store. Some products are only available in the US store. And some products, I've forgotten to put the Europe in there, but most of them I have Europe listed in the information below the video. So now I'm going to put that little bit of a shadow in there. And I think we're going to zoom in even closer because I want even closer. And then I'm going to rotate, get my hand out of the way. This has a lovely little brush tip on the brush tip. You've got 
you know, you can go with different line widths. You can go very fine or pretty fine. And then you can squish down and you can swoop your lines. So it's really nice. I am going to just very gently touch in at that center point. See how you can still see the the fine line tip, the fine line through the through the brush ink. So when the ink goes on with the brush, it's not as dark or it's a little more transparent. That's what I want to say. There you go. You see how it makes it feel like it stands up a little bit more. Like those are little scales that are layered. Now I'm just going to work my way around. This is going to be a, um, you know, kind of a slow doodle, guys. I just grabbed the yellow ochre. Let's see how the yellow ochre goes. And you can make your lines as, or scallops as big as you want. If you make them bigger, you'll be putting more lines on the inside to detail it. And this is very much like fish scales. So if you were interested in doing a mermaid tail or some type of fishy type creature. But again, this is super basic. And I like the repetitive nature of this, doing it in all the different colors going around. We're going to do a different pattern on that next row in, but a scaly web. Yeah, absolutely a scaly web. So, you know, you grab your cup of tea or your cup of coffee, glass of water, your lunch, kind of hang out. This is very much a, a meditative process. If you are looking for some, you know, peaceful release of tension. Your lines don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be, you don't have to worry about making them perfectly spaced. It's all part of that calm and easygoing process here. We're just doodling with fine line pens and autumn colors. That's, that's really the thing that's making me happy here is these autumn colors. I am going to take a black pen, probably the black brush pen and color in that background. Yes, it's a twee marker, twee marker. I, for those of you who just came in, twee markers are a double ended marker with a 0.4 millimeter, uh, sharp tip fine tip and a oops and a brush tip on the other end they have a clear body you can see they share the same barrel of ink going all the way through so my my uh, inclination is that these should be stored laying flat not standing on one end or the other end just because you want the ink to be available to both ends. Yeah, they're, they're cool. And I have Robin to thank for this because she is the one who asked if I would check these out. Then, then there was a whole bunch of other people who said, Hey, will you check those out? So it was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so 
So I just took the actual harder tip, that fine tip, and went in there and started shading, giving it a little bit darker shadow at that join. And then I'm going to use the brush tip. And I am working on top of 100% cotton watercolor paper. So, oh, really cool thing. If you're somebody who likes to peg your caps on, the caps stay on so you don't have to worry about losing it. And if you have a whole bunch of caps laying out, it doesn't matter which one you pick up because they're all clear. So you don't have to worry. The brush tip has this little kind of clip end on it. It doesn't actually, you, you couldn't actually clip this onto anything but it just is that indication, that's the brush tip. And they do tell you with little pictures, brush tip and uh, fine point. So now I'm going to rotate it because I like to put the tip into that corner and slide it around. See how by using that harder tip first, to really kind of push in that shadow in the corners, how it really emphasizes that shadowy look. So just keep working your way around. And if you are doing something else, thank you for joining me while you are working on another project. I love that. Uh, camel brown. This is another kind of lighter brown in those sort of autumn -y colors. It's sort of a cool brown too. It's not a super, super warm, but it's kind of a cooler yellowy brown. I know you think yellow wouldn't be cool, but you can have cool yellow or cool brown. They don't all have to be hot. You like the effect. Excellent. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, yeah, it's a lot of fun is kind of my uh, catchphrase right this moment because I am having so much fun. These would be an awesome Christmas present. Put them on your wish list. And we're just going to work our way around. It's, it, this is not a, a fast, we're not fast forwarding here. I'm doing my doodling at real time speed. So you're getting some chattiness from me. I would, I know that a lot of you guys join me for the live shows because of the chatting and I thank you so much for coming in and chatting with each other and supporting each other. I, I love my community. You guys, I feel so grateful that you're here, that you show up whenever I do a live. I'm thinking I really am going to do because I'm so, so tied to this doodling right now. And I want to do some bigger doodles. And I'm thinking about just turning on the camera, just going live. It won't be scheduled. It'll just be, you know, surprise, probably in the evening. So it would be kind of late for my East Coast folks. It will be you know, evening time for my West Coast folks, and it might be early morning time for my Europe folks. Early morning, like just getting up in the morning. So, I am trying to keep my hand back out of the way. I know sometimes I sort of creep up on my pen, so I'm trying to keep my hand back out of the way.
so there we go but yeah I love how you guys are supporting each other in chat and that you know we're developing friendships that we would never have had the opportunity to do we do have a Facebook group and I do post on Instagram and I do have a lovely group of patrons who are supporting my channel with monthly subscription and that is over on patreon.com all the links are down below if you're interested in supporting my channel those are just some fun fun ways because we can build more community and build more support for each other I think I'm gonna put a little bit of a darker line just right along that web line there so it feels kind of like it's tucked in I don't know maybe so something I've noticed is that I have been missing the opportunity to just sit and read books See, I like that effect too, even without the brush pen. Yeah, doodling in the evenings, I, I sit in my, my chair in the living room and put on a show that I've watched many times before. <laughs> I'm that person, guys. I, I come by it naturally. I thought my mom was the weirdest person in the world when she would put on the reruns of murder she wrote but it was because it was something that she knew was already you know she already knew the outcome of it and it was a fun thing to have just in the background as she was doing other things <laughs> so yeah I, I did I thought she was the weirdest person for watching reruns you've already seen the show you already know So, all right, let's go with, I think I'm going to move into a little bit of a green. This is an army brown, but it's kind of a greenish brown. So, and I don't have these pens set up in any specific order. I'm just using autumn colors. Yeah, I think Angela Lansbury is probably one of the most calming people in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Angela Lansbury, you know, I I have loved her my entire life. I grew up watching Murder She Wrote because my mom would watch it all the time. I loved how many of you guys remember the court jester? The Danny Kay court jester movie? So fun. I actually have that on my streaming device <laughs> because I bought that movie. That's one of those movies that I will put on. And the reason why I brought that up is because Angela Lansbury was the princess in the movie. So fun. Young Angela Lansbury. And, I mean, anything Danny Kay. It's almost time to pull out White Christmas. <laughs> I do wait until after Halloween to pull out my, my winter holiday things. My movies and music. I don't start decorating until after my son's birthday, which is December 4th, but I do start working on projects and I do start watching movies and shows, but yeah, Danny Kay, bed knobs and broomsticks. Absolutely. I went to bed knobs, went and watched bed, bed knobs and broomsticks at our little local 
theater in downtown Vancouver, Washington when I was a kid and had my 35 cents for admission in my in my hand and I had to keep an eye on my two younger sisters and my parents would drop us off and the line would be wrapped around the building for the movies. I remember going and seeing Charlie and the Cho uh, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory when I, you know, was little when it came when it came to that theater. Now that theater has always been, I believe, more of a second run or an art theater. So it wasn't, you know, first run, but it was thirty five cents a movie and fifteen cent popcorn. Now, that may give you guys an indication of age or when this was going on. See, the lines don't have to be, they don't have to match. And it gives a movement and a feeling. You've watched White Christmas in July. Oh, yeah. Okay. There is Christmas in July and watching shows of a Christmas in July type of time are absolutely on my top list of things to do, especially July in the Pacific Northwest because we can end up with some uh, cool weather in July until you get past uh, basically until you're past July 5th so I might do Christmas in July you know around 4th of July some years I remember reading a book many years ago where the you know, it was one of those those teens in space type of books. You know, teens in school, teens at a school in space, and the counselor had problems of his own, and he would buy cheesecake and watch Christmas and uh, watch uh, White Christmas in July as part of his therapy for himself. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, watching my uh, watching the court jester and having tea in in the throne. That's a I love that. Being being uh being somebody who loves, I, I used to make, well, I still make tea. What am I saying? I still make tea all the time. Ooh, I just grabbed, uh, this is the caramel brown. See, there's a caramel brown and a camel brown around here somewhere. Did I already use it? Oh, yeah. The color, this color right here, that was the camel brown, and this is the Caramel brown. Going to movies, uh, going to a movie theater to watch the movies because of the social interaction. Yeah, I, I do miss a certain amount of that, but we've actually kind of slowed down on going to the actual movie theater unless it's something that was just I absolutely had to see it on the big screen or my husband had to see it on the big screen but you know so many times movies I want them to be more um, where I can just stop the movie <laughs> and go to the restroom and not miss things or go get my next cup of tea. That's what I was going to start talking about was the cups of tea. I still make a pot of tea and pour a little, a little creamy creamer pitcher with milk and put it on a tray with a couple biscuits, cookies and have tea and biscuits. Maybe we'll do that one of these days. We'll have a we'll have an afternoon tea doodle session. I 
kind of like that idea. I'm so, so into doodling right now. And these colored pens are just making me so happy. I am really, really enjoying this. So I would say that I really like these pens. I know that they, the colors themselves will blend with each other. I, for those of you who just came in, I did these leaves and that's just layering those pens. And I did do it on top of the eco pen and I did use the gray marker that came in the set for underneath is the shadow. See, this is turning into quite the little, uh, little project, isn't it? Tea and crumpets. I actually made crumpets a couple, uh, week, last week. I was in the mood for crumpets. And crumpets, if people don't know what a crumpet is, it's actually really and truly a crumpet is a yeast bread that's poured out in a batter into metal rings onto a hot dry griddle and basically cooked like a pancake where you cook the bottom and, and it the air and steam comes up through bubbles up and creates lots of bubbles and then the bottom is really brown the top you don't tend to cook as long. You might flip it over and just dry off the top on the griddle. And they tend to be thick, you know, half an inch, um, two thirds of an inch or so, maybe a, a one and a half centimeters to two centimeters thick. And they're not split. You don't split them open. You If you're eating them right away, you just put a ton of butter on them and, and call it good. If you're eating them after the fact, after they've been cooked, you can store them in the refrigerator for a couple days, wrapped, and pull it out, toss it in the toaster. <laughs> and when it comes out, it's all kind of crunchy and um, golden, and then you just put your butter on top. Or you can put it in a pan and fry them and warm them up that way also. Oh yeah, cheering, cheering at a movie. Absolutely. I remember clapping like crazy during Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I loved we did, I did see bed knobs and broomsticks, like I said, in the the little theater, the historic theater in downtown Vancouver, Washington, which actually was made quite famous early in the pandemic as one of the theaters putting uh, mask sayings from movies that deal with masks. And the one that they really got noted for was when they put the uh, saying from the Princess Bride about masks. You know, why do you wear a mask? Oh, I believe everyone will be wearing masks. They're so comfortable. <laughs> so that was Inigo asking uh, Wesley the pirate. I think having our art supplies that make us happy and not worrying about if we're going to be using them all up, you know, we can always gift art supplies we're not using or that we don't think we'll ever use again, gift them to uh, the like the women and children's shelters. Those are places that can always need, that can always need, that can always use 
art supplies because many times women with children that are leaving a bad situation they don't they you know you that many times they leave with just the clothes on their backs and get out so they don't you know they can't bring bring all the art supplies and things and it's art is one of those things that you can do that really does improve your outlook it gives you something to have control over I think that's one of the reasons why I really like art doodling I'm the one in control of this pen nobody's telling me what to do where to put my pen I'm not telling you how to doodle I'm showing you what I'm doing but I'm not telling you this is the way because oh my gosh there are so many ways but sharing your art supplies I've done that uh, while I was working in in education I would go through periodically and clean out my art room and I would I would not get rid of tools so the wood burner that I bought 25 years ago I did not gift that away because tools are things that you'll come back to your tools and you'll go oh my gosh I really wish I had whatever tool it was that you had bought and then gave away but marker pens those kinds of things do dry out over time and so if you're not using them passing them on to grandkids to cousins to neighbors to shelters to schools or art programs at your library those are all really great places to share art supplies that they're still good but you're not going to use them anymore I ended up gifting all of my almost all of my rubber stamps except for the the ones that I designed I kept those but pretty much all of the rubber stamps I I had bins and bins and bins of rubber stamps and I had bins of hand carved rubber stamps that I had done So yeah, there are, there are uh, videos on how to bring back your dried markers. I know that Lindsay, the frugal crafter has many videos on doing things like that. And I'm not saying get rid of things that you love to use that may have dried up. I'm saying if you, you know, have five sets of colored pencils and you only use two of them, ever and you're not using the you know the the inexpensive set that you bought I I have gifted those inexpensive sets of things away I've actually gifted some a little bit more expensive things away also and sometimes I mean for me now I'm actually starting to get more products from different companies to test I have I have kind of decided that just testing if I mean I've got a Arteza I've got sort of a relationship here going with them I really I love their products and I have been doing my my reviews of their products just because I want the products and I want to try them out since I know that many of you guys want to try them out also but don't want to spend the money on them so but I've had some companies starting to get in touch with me to test their products and I can tell that they are maybe I mean they're newer company 
or they're a company that, um, I don't know, the just, you get a vibe, you get a feel for things, right? And that's kind of where I am. Some of them I'm getting sort of this eh, feel. And some of them, I, I did a, uh, if anybody's interested of, in the uh, Viviva color sheets, I know that uh, Cinnamon used them on a new video. I haven't done a video with them, but I did a blog post, if you're interested, on my website, and that's deliberately-creative.com. It's one of my new new things I'm trying to do is I'm starting to try and get some reviews and things like that uh, actually on the website, on my website. Because I need to just start, oh, this is looking really pretty. I need to just start getting a little bit more focused. Well, Robin, thank you so much for being here. So, oh, you're making chocolate chip cookies, Diane? Excellent. You know, I'm going to have to make some chocolate chip cookies. I, we have a really dear neighbor who brought over chocolate chip cookies this weekend, and I can't eat them because I am gluten-free, and I so my husband got to have all the cookies, but he didn't eat them all. He did take them and share them at work. But I, I really, I've got chocolate chips. I need to make chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> so... So I've got a, like I said, I've got the Viviva Color Sheets review up on my website. They're a lot of fun. And that's a company, it's a um, company in India. And everything is handmade on them. They're they're put together by hand. They're not machined. So it's, that's kind of fun because they're, small family business, trying to, to make it in the big art materials world. see they're not the same they have variations I'm not I'm not stressing over making it perfect now if you want to you know focus and be more more mindful of how your lines are landing that is actually a really good meditative thing to do is to be very mindful on where your lines are and how they're landing. If that brings you joy, then you should do it. That's really my, my focus for, for doing my doodling, is if it brings me joy, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have fun and just enjoy it. And I do, I do like that effect of putting the more concentrated color right down into those corners. And then take that brush tip again. Yeah, I, I make my own flower mix. 
for those of you interested. It's, I love it because I can actually make bread with it. I can make biscuits and cookies and it's a, it's a combination flour and I like it because it's very, um, I can get the, I can get all of the materials I need to make it at a local grocery store. So it has, uh, so it has sorghum flour and millet flour and almond flour, oat, um, oat flour, tapioca starch, potato starch, corn starch, and xanthan gum. So it's, it's really good. Yeah, I'm, I don't tend to use coconut flour. It, I'm not sure. I, it kind of gives sort of a powdery effect in my mouth. I know that coconut flour really absorbs moisture. So if you're using coconut flour, I'm sure you already know that. But for other people who don't know, coconut flour really absorbs moisture. So you have to add a lot more liquid to use it. Oh wow, look at that. I just put my little shadows in before I even did my, my little arches. See, sometimes your brain just wants to do things in different orders. And because I'm talking this whole time, my, my brain and hand are kind of doing whatever they're going to do. So there it is. But yeah, I, I absolutely love cooking. I have been cooking and baking since I was seven. I made my first yeast bread when I was seven, doing the whole thing by myself. I mean, my mom was standing right there. She was telling me, you know, put two cups of this and a cup of that and then start add, adding flour and kneading it and all of it. But I did everything from start to finish by myself and made four loaves of white bread and then bake them up. And we, my cousins were, the, were over that afternoon. So we cut into those warm loaves of bread and that is one of the best, best memories I have. And now this is a different color. This is not the same color that, that I put on. This is a wine stain. And I think that first, where's, where's that first brownie? It was latte brown, I think. It's latte brown. Is that latte brown? No, that's latte brown. Huh, I'm not sure which color that was. Oh, there it is. It was hazelnut brown. So the first color I put down was hazelnut brown, and this color I just put down is wine stain. And it is more red. It's a little bit, it's pretty much on the same, um, in the same tone of color, but it is more red. Yeah, sometimes my brain just sort of takes me off and says, hey, you need to, to find what color that was. There we go. See, just little doodle. <laughs> you know, I did not set up a giveaway, but we might, uh, let's see if we can figure out a way to do this as a giveaway. How should we do this as a giveaway? I mean, I can set one up really fast after we get, 
I want to get the next layer of doodling going here. And I'm just going to move in and use, I've, I've got the actual wine red this time, and that's going to go in here. And I am looking at this going, I'm going to start in the corner and work across the corner, I think. Ooh. Let's see. Mm, what, what, ooh, I'm trying to think. What do I want to do here? So we're in a shape that's like this. So if I work, I, I could do kind of like the paradox going around. Let's see. That could be fun because then it'll look like it's sort of tunneling down in. Maybe we'll do that. So I'm starting at the, the corner here and I'm going to go thin and I'm going to make it swing out just a little bit, a little bit thick. And then thin to thick, thin to thick, thin to thick. You see what I mean here? I'm starting, it's narrow right here it's getting thicker right there. Then I'm going to go thin to thick, thin to thick, and I'm just going to work my way around. So how should we do the, the giveaway? Should I go ahead and just set one up so that it's the normal go in, put your, you know, Put your email address and name. Ooh, this is going to be pretty. And because it's sort of a square, that's a gray. I think I want, I want maybe some greenish tones. Going for some of these more greenish, sage green maybe, and this is moss green, sage green, um, tea green. Let's do that. Let's let's get some of those going. So I'm going to move into the sage green. Okay, so we've got we've got uh, professional movie quoter in here. <laughs> Inconceivable. I do not believe that you. It. I do not think that it means what you think it means. Ooh, that one's pretty light. That's actually no, that's that's cool though. So this this pattern is called paradox, I believe. And you get this lovely twisting 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 shape. This is tea green. Whoops. I'm not doing it with the brush. Oh, that's almost the same color as the background. See, I did grab these much lighter colors, didn't I? And you can have a much more consistent twirl going on if you are if you rotate your your paper but I'm like lazy so this is moss green I like that thin to thick thin 
to thick. See so thin, and then it swings out and goes a little bit wider. Thin to thick, thin to thick. I'm trying to keep my hand back out of the way too, so that you can see it happen. It's like magic. I love. I love Paradox. I could do just pages of Paradox. We could do that. I know that Dawn from Draw Tangles with Dawn has done pages of Paradox on her, on her website or on her YouTube channel. And if your line, if you end up with one that's too thick, you can just go back and put another line in. Save the cookies. <laughs> oh no, don't burn the chocolate chip cookies. Let's see. I'm going to grab the Sienna Brown. Let's see. And the Sienna Brown is very burgundy <laughs> to me. It's very red. Not not an orangey brown at all. I love how these go down on the watercolor paper and how they work on the mixed media paper because that's what I did it on first was mixed media paper. So and they don't bleed. They do not bleed through, although I am seeing that they are catching the fibers a little bit on the paper because I'm kind of pressing. That is looking really cool. Let's see. Next color is going to be the cocoa brown. You notice I'm getting a lot more into the darker brown colors again. Very much like hazelnut brown, but it's a it's a um, has a bit more of a a black tone to it. Or a cooler cooler tone than the hazelnut brown. Hazelnut brown's very warm. That's this one right here. But this is very similar in tone. And I think I want a couple of those to have a little bit more couple more lines. Your lines don't have to match going all the way around. They don't have to be perfectly straight. You still get a cool effect. You see how this is like wrapping around in here now? In that web? I might go back on these two that are so light and put a darker color in on those. Just because I can. How about blues? Um, you know, I, I want to try the blues out on something, but I'm kind of keeping this one in the more earth tone. So this particular project I think is earth toned, but so this is cottage gray. Nope. That's going to be really light. I'm not going to go with that. Um, Maybe, I'd, let's see here. This is jungle green and lime will be too bright. That's a turquoise forest. Forest and jungle are pretty darn dark. So 
thin to thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick. And you can do this in any kind of shape, but you do tend to have straight lines. So straight lines, but you can fit it into almost any kind of shape. Ask for red. Well, we have wine on here already. Let's see. And then this one is the forest green. I may go back and just grab one of my other colors and do it down here in those two that are a little bit too desaturated. There. See? Just go make them have as many lines as you want. See how it feels like those two just disappear? We need those to have a little bit stronger color. So I think I'm not sure which color. That's yellow ochre. Which one was yellow ochre? Now I have to, oh, that's too close right there. So no, not yellow ochre. And then that, that's that brown right there. Um, let's go. That's that one, too close here. That's the one that I did right there. See, I'm just, testing out my my colors see what I see what I've got oh this would be good okay I'll do this is the wine stain so I'm gonna just right here I'm just gonna go in and thin to thick thin to thick thin to thick see just because you already put one color down doesn't mean you can't go back and put another color. It's just going to give it a little bit more variation. Maybe there was a plant or something in the background behind there. There was just a plant back there. And then that one right there, I do do need something. Now this is the green, that's the olive green, that's right there. We're gonna go with the brown tone, brown tone. That's hazelnuts over there. I don't really want it to be. army brown? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Huh? Army brown? So, do, oh yeah, I'm going to do the branches. Don't worry. But the branch is just going to be done in, um, just in silhouette, and I'm just going to use the, I'm, I'm just going to use the brush tip on the noir or shadow black, 
haven't quite decided which one. If I want it to be a softer, we could do doodling in on the branches. Did you guys want doodling on the branches or just a soft pattern on the branches? And then I color over it with the gray or the black. Let's zoom out. Let's zoom out so you can see. Isn't that cool? So, all right, I need to move these, these pens out of the way. I could use concrete gray and well, let's see what shadow black concrete gray and the noir so this is noir this is just their plain black this is shadow black has more of a green undertone to it. So now we need to zoom in so you can actually see it. Kind of a green blue undertone to it on the shadow. And this is the concrete gray, so it's a lot lighter. Doodling combo, okay. There we go. We'll doodle in combo. So what I'll do is I will doodle with the hmm. What do I want to do? Do I want to I think I'm going to doodle with my eco pen, and I will go over it with the concrete gray. So I'll because then you'll be able to see the doodle because. Well, but I kind of like that shadow. Hmm. All right. Well, truthfully, the doodling in the in the branches, I think, is going to be more bark type doodling. So, finding one of the bumps and whoops, sorry, finding one of the bumps and kind of following it along. Just like that. I mean, really, you can get all kinds of effects. Maybe I want to thicken up my branch a little bit because we're doing this type of a doodle, filling it in. Giving it texture. But it's just following a line and going, oh, I like that. Let's move over that way. Maybe there's been a branch that was right here and it kind of broke off. So it has one of those scars. We all have scars, right? I hear Mark making coffee. My tummy just rumbled because I heard him making coffee. <laughs> and I'm totally off the screen. Guys, I am so sorry. So I've been just sliding off. Yeah, let's let's zoom out because I'm I'm up too big here. There we go. So, you know, just Doodling around the edges. Make a shape and doodle around the shape. Make a shape and then maybe fill in that shape. And then that gives you a place for your line to go around.
this is really, you know, we really don't know scale on this, do we? This could be a huge spider. This could be uh, the spider in The Hobbit that catches the dwarves. This could be, or this could be a tiny little branch with just lots of detail. But see, I'm not, I'm not being precious about my, my doodles. And this is where if you had put your lines going down were wobbly, this makes that just all part of the feature of your artwork. Because look at that. Wobbly lines give you a place to start and stop lines. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Coffee time. I see that, but it's it's almost time for me to get to have my coffee. If if he gives me my coffee right now, it will just get cold because I'm talking and I'm doodling with you guys. So I just need to finish up so I can get my coffee. <laughs> Let's split that into two more little branches right there. Look at that. Maybe I maybe I want a little busted off step uh, stub right there. And I just did it again. I thought I was zoomed out enough. I'm sorry. See, I'm I'm getting I was getting distracted by the the possibility of coffee, so I was like, let's just get this done. <laughs> All right, so I am going to have to figure out how to give this away, though. Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to post on my website this picture, and that. It's not going to be there yet. Give me about 20 minutes. I will post this picture up on my website and you just make a comment on the blog post, on the picture. Make a comment on the picture. And by the end of today, I will comment back to the comment that won. Actually, I'll comment back to everybody, but um, the I will use a random picker and just the order that you put your name in is the order that it's going to happen. Or, oh, let's see. Whoops, sorry. Just bashed into the... Or I could just, if you guys wanted to hang out here for a couple minutes, I can go and make the Google form and we can find out who won it right now. Because it's going to be a small group of folks. Only the people that are here will know that this happened. Because I'm not posting it on the front page of the of this video. And see where my line just, I, I kind of went outside. I'm just going to make that into a feature. There we go. You guys want the exclusive? You vote for now. <laughs> oh, I won't forget to sign it. Thank you. I love this, though. But we do need to pull the... We do need to pull the the tape off. So I'm going to pull the tape off. Put my 
tape over to the side because I'll use it again. I'm glad that I put the little bit of background in on it. It just makes it when you put the tape down first and then put background on it, it just gives you that pretty white border. Oh, and I did put a little arrow on this so I knew where the fold on this card is because this is an actual greeting card with an envelope. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. So, look at that. All right, we're going to make a really fast... Yes, I did. I added the concrete gray to the to the branch. See? I'm really tickled by that. Oh, <laughs> sitting here in front of me, I did do a little uh, playing card. The the ace of spiders. <laughs> All right, I need to get the um, the fun little thing made here. Let's see. I'm going to turn on the background music for a second and just let that play while I'm setting up the... There we go. We've got something pretty there to look at um, while I'm setting up the Google form. that. Go back. Start new. <laughs> Paste. This is sp Fall Spider. Web. Fall Spider Web. All right. First question. Name. First and last. Required. Email address. Required. And because you're already here, you guys already can, and you guys don't have to have a question this time. I am going to save. go. Paste it. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys, there's the link. So quickly go and put in your information. We are going to be drawing at uh, five minutes after. So that gives us about four or five minutes. And while we're waiting, while we're waiting, 
over on Tangi, I'm going to be doing this as a fun real-time lesson and it's free but you do have to sign up on Tangi and uh, you have to sign up for the workshop through the Tangi app and it so if you go and sign up for Tangi you do have to and that's let's see here let me give you the form link again did it ask for email twice oh let me go fix that let me go fix that boom That's fixed. Yeah, <laughs> fixed. You know, <laughs> you know when um, you're doing something really fast. Sometimes you don't read all of the things. <laughs> but there you go. I have. Uh, this class on Tangi, it is my, you know, fun Halloween pumpkin card. And let me go and see if I can grab my, get logged on to my Tangi here real quick. And I just want to go to my profile. There we go. Oh, because I'm not in the app on my on my computer. Err, err. Oh, there we go. Okay, I can do it that way. All right. So while we're waiting, another minute here. I am showing you my Tangi, and this is the website um, of. The website version, website version of it, so you can actually uh, go to the website using the link here. But you can't sign up for my web, my web class, until you have it on an app, like on your tablet or your phone, and it can be on Google side or on. Um, it can be on the Google side or it can be on the iPhone side, either ones. And see, so sign up for my live, how to, how to draw and color this cute pumpkin right there. Um, let's see, will it play? So I'm really excited. I'm going to be teaching how to draw this cute pumpkin live here on Tangi. You want to know how to find my class here on Tangi? Click that button in the center bottom. It says workshops. Then scroll through the cards. You'll find mine. It's the one with the happy pumpkin on it. Click the learn more button and you can click sign up to sign up for the class. Join me here on Tangi for a fun pumpkin live lesson. Great for the holidays or anytime you just want a little cute spooky fun. See you there. Whoop. <laughs> and then it started going off into other things. <laughs> so I'm really excited. I'm going oh, to be whoop. And that is one of the things is that things do um, auto start playing again. <laughs> so let's just go to the wide view. <laughs> and now I have to find my, um, my YouTube, my, my class. You guys, I lost you. Oh no, I lost you. Where's my, let's see, let's see if I found you here. No. Oh my goodness. Are you guys still there? I hope you're still there. It says people are still watching. <laughs> I did. I totally, this is one of those times when I tried to do something more than what I should have been doing. I should have been paying attention to just doing the regular, regular show stuff and not trying to go off and do fun, weird things. 
So I'm just hoping that it's going to come up and show me everybody. Yay! Yes, tangi.co, tangi.co. And uh, that's how you can find it with your web browser. But to sign up for the class, you do have to download the app. And um, it says you'll become a creator. But all you have to do is log in with your Google login. Because Tangi is a Google company. Everybody's here. Yes, I know. I see. Everybody's there. (laughs) Woohoo! We're here. We're here. We're here. (laughs) All right. And I'm going to go and... Um, now I'm going to go find my form again. See, because I, I did it on a different screen. There it is. All right. Form. On my forms. And go here. False spider. Let's see. How many of you guys? Okay, 13 of you guys have signed up. Is anybody trying to still sign up? I will give you two more minutes. Two more minutes, and then I will close it. Yeah, Google kind of owns everything. Tangi is a new pro, uh, is a new app. It's a new platform that is. Um, they are trying to keep it in the creative space, where it is cooking and DIYs, gardening, art, and um, there's a little bit of fashion. But I tend, oh, and parenting. So lots of art for parents and grandparents to do things with their grandkids. I have several recipes on my Tangi. And I'm getting so close to getting 100 followers on Tangi. So once I'm at 100 followers, I'll be able to get two minutes to do on my videos. That's fine. That's fine. Um... If it was before the fix, you just put your email address in twice. It's no big deal. And uh, so it was all the same form. So I will, uh, What um, what's required for taking a, ta- for the Tangi class? The Tangi class, um, if you're doing Tangi through the app and it will be a Google Meet live class, you will, if you sign up for it, you will get a link for the, you know, it will be sent to you within 24 hours or so. You'll get a link for the class for Google Meet. It will be on Sunday, the 18th of October. And it is, um, we're just, this is just pen with some uh, watercolor pencil. So watercolors, pens, markers, whatever you want. I'm going to show how to draw this and doodle it. So it'll be a lot of fun. I think it will be around... 8.30 or 9.30 in the evening in India. That's I've got a, a quite a following going now on my Tangi from India. So that's really cool. And, you know, so it'll be coming on tea time in Great Britain. It'll be about 4.30 in the afternoon in Britain. It would be uh, 11.30 in the morning in Europe. Uh, Europe. Eastern United States time and 8.30 in the morning Pacific time. Oh yeah, your granddaughter can do this. My name on Tangi is deliberately creative. So, all right, it's 10.10. We're going to close the, close the, the class, the class, the my brain. See, I'm, I'm all thinking about class now. We are going to close the responses. All right. So not accepting responses anymore. I am going to go ahead and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see. Do we have any that, that were duplicated? All right, so it says, okay, so um, Jay Polzin, Polzin, uh, it does say that you're on here twice. And so when I go into my, um, when I go into the form, there it is, form, create a spreadsheet, create the spreadsheet. 
and I'm just going to go and create the spreadsheet again because it always does that. There we go. I'm going to go in and the one entry that duplicated, I will just delete that row. And everybody else is still there. Mark, you're not allowed to enter. So I'm deleting Mark also. He's not allowed to enter. He lives in the same house with me. He can get this art, this type of artwork all the time. He, he doesn't get to enter. All right, so now we have 2 through 12. So I'm going to hide the email addresses. I will go ahead and bring up the browser page again. And yay, my, my sound is working on the browser page. Yay. All right, guys. So we've got 2 through 12. And now I'm going to go and bring up the random.org. Yeah, allow. I'm going to say... I'll leave it one and I'll do through 13. So if one or 13 gets picked, we'll, we'll just draw again, but I want to give it, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it always picks on the first <laughs> number two. Woohoo. <laughs> Usually it doesn't pick in the, in the first slot or the last slot. So I wanted to give a little bit of room. Number two. All right, that's Joanne. Whoops, wrong page. <laughs> Where did it go? Where's my, there it is. Joanne, you are number two. Joanne, I will send you an email that, uh, let's see here. Where did my, I wanted to fill that with a color. That's what it is. I will send you an email. You need to reply to me with your mailing address and I am so excited that you won. That's so cool. The fixed form and the, and it was the same form. It was the same form. So Joanne, woohoo. Oh, I should probably go ahead and head back into the uh, the video again, right? <laughs> you guys got to see a little bit of behind the scenes right there, what I see. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you share this video with your friends, you leave a comment, you click the bell for notifications, and you come back here. Uh, oh yeah, because if I do a live impromptu in the evening, or early morning for Europe, you uh, want to be subscribed and have the notifications all turned on if you want to find out when I go live on a surprise, because I am really looking forward to doing it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. And make sure that you're clicking up here. There's fun videos that you guys can do more of. Lots of videos with lots of doodling. <laughs> Thank you guys. And I'll see you again really soon.